Hello, beloved family, starseeds all over planet Earth. Welcome to Starseed Support, our weekly Starseed Support live stream. Um, we're getting started on our uh, weekly transmission here. I'm just waiting for a little bit of feedback from my technology to let me know that we are indeed live. And it looks like we are. So welcome. Hello. I'm so excited to connect with all of you today. We had in this community an amazing week this week. So we're going to get started in just a, a few minutes. Um, today we are going to be talking about the subject of uh, Lush and sexual misery programming. I'm really excited to begin to get into these more specific conversations because I think at this point, um, can you guys believe we've been doing Starseed mission supports for pretty much a year? I could not believe it um, because I think at this point, ooh, so yeah, um, we've gone through a lot of the more basic level conversations at this point, conversations about self-healing and energy systems and all sorts of things like that. And um, this incoming year, we're going to get a, a kind of a spiral deeper. And some of these more intense conversations are coming up. And I think the reason why it's coming up as well is the, the awakening is continuing to happen. And I think all of us at this point, if not most of us, are looking for uh, just teachings and information that has a little bit more substance. We're getting tired of talking about grounding and chakras and all of those things that don't seem to be really getting us to the places that we really need to be going here on this planet, um, meaning, you know, really busting through the systems and the mind control and really understanding how to he help humanity wake up. And a lot of this, you know, it is very technical, it is scientific. The reason why we seem to have this bifurcation or even this barrier, like, you know, there's like all of these quantum light worker star season there's this wall or something and we're trying to penetrate through the wall to get to the 3d um and get to all the humans that are there but instead of doing that it seems like we're just getting further and so here we're really beginning to break down some of these more technical issues um this matrix that we see here on earth did not happen by accident which is why there's very many deliberate actions that are being taken by the cabal, whatever you want to call them, um, you know, even with this whole shenanigans that we now see with the lockdowns and everything, it's it's not like they're happening by accident, right? You know, these people, um, they have deliberately planned all of these things and they are continuing to exert a lot of effort, you know, through the news and through the government telling us that we need to stay home and through the vaccine and all of these things. It's a very deliberate effort that is being placed upon humanity to uh, perpetuate a certain reality. And so in order for us to break out of that, it needs to be a very deliberate effort on our part as well. Um, if we just sit around and do nothing, um, the people that are exerting the effort are obviously going to continue the reality that they like to create. And so this series, Starseed Mission Support, we're really here to support the star seeds to give you this information, um, uh, information that you really need to understand your mission fully. This part of the Earth Star Academy we, we refer as the lucidity training. Lucidity training is basically becoming more and more integrated and lucid in your life because when you first wake up, you might realize, oh crap, you know, I'm, I'm from some other dimension or I'm just different. I'm here to be of service and I'm here to love humanity. This seems like something really weird is going on on this planet. You know, all of these realizations are flying around in your head. But it's like we come into this moment of lucidity and then we kind of almost fall back asleep or something, you know, as we go about our day. Because we are, we do have to exert a lot of effort um, in continuously waking up because the consensus and the general consciousness on Earth, there's almost a gravity to it, right? So it's like we're consistently flowing back and forth between truly knowing who we are and what we're here to do and kind of being like, well, maybe I'm crazy or something. Or, you know, that seems really insane to believe that there's a system so large that it is encapsulating the whole planet. And so lucidity training basically gives us the, the mental information that we need and the affirmation that star seeds need to step deeper into the awakening process to fully remember um oh hello we have a guest this is charlie charlie 
He's saying hello. He's just making sure that everybody's behaving correctly. <laughs> My supervisor. Anyway. <sighs> yes. So a part of this lucidity training, as I was saying, is helping the star seeds truly um, a lot of the things I hear you guys say is, you know, oh, wow, you know, I've always thought these things, but finally somebody is giving me the words or I've always thought these things and finally I'm being affirmed that what I believe is true because, you know, uh, this society kind of make us feel like we're psychos and crazy people for thousands of years now. It's continuing. And so um Together, I think that it's really helpful for us to see that there sometimes is 200 people on these live streams and we're all resonating with this information and to feel like you're not alone and that you're not crazy. And in fact, there is something incredible that is unfolding on the planet right now and we are here at the forefront of it. And on that note, I, I just want to briefly talk about the grid work experience that we had together over the week um, over the Syrian gateway I think we're still in the tail end of the Syrian gateway is just about kind of completing today um, I know that so many people had incredible experiences and I'm just so grateful I'm so excited that we were able to share in that experience together I know that there are many many more experiences for us to have um, on that front upcoming and today's conversation is really going to support the understanding of how what we do works because, you know, a lot of you are maybe new to this kind of te telepathic, psychic kind of grid work, even though it makes sense on a quantum level that we do interface and we do connect and we do influence um, the planetary state and each other. That's why we're, we're here. And also that's why mass meditations work. Right. It's like there's a lot of studies that have been done to prove the efficacy of mass meditations to lower crime rates and in, inspire higher vibrations in collectives and cities. And when we understand the science and the mechanics of how that works, we can capitalize on the mechanics to make it work even greater. And that's kind, kind of what we're beginning to do by utilizing sound frequency and visualization. And of course, working on healing and clearing ourselves and upgrading our light body, which allows us to transform higher uh, amounts and higher vibrations of source energy, which gives us that extra boost in the amount of work that we're able to facilitate on a planetary level. Um, and so here we are, we're going to be talking about Lush uh, collection and the sexual misery programming today. The reason why we're diving into this next chapter of our work together here is because um, there is another grid work opportunity upcoming in February. This particular grid work um, experience is going to be contained. And so you guys are going to see over the next few years, there's going to be a couple of different things happen. So me, I'm turning 28 years old. I'm just getting started here on this planet. I would say that for the last eight years, I've been in intense training. And at this point, I'm more actively on mission. And so when the Earth Star Academy opens its doors in February, there's going to be a couple of things that happens. Yes, I'm absolutely going to continue to do these live streams. And for those of you that are either too advanced to be in my school, meaning you feel like you're totally online and you're just enjoying the community aspect of things, um, and you don't need to be joining my academy, um, we're still inviting everyone to work together and you're joining these online communities. The Telegram group is going to be there. And so there's still going to be regular grid work opportunity for the community at large. And then there's going to be other grid work experiences that are contained in Earth Star Academy, particularly for, you know, beings in the intermediate and advanced levels. This is encouraging us to gain skills because there are some missions, as you may understand, that um, require a little bit more of a container. The reason for that is a because some of these missions that will go on will affect certain stargates and will affect certain technologies that were placed in, in placed uh, by negative ETs. And so for the safety of the people involved, you know, I just would like for people to have had that training to be participating. And in ESA, we provide people with, you know, light body uh, healing and light body activation support on a weekly basis. And this is my way of, you know, this is just the way that I'm being guided to um, facilitate 
recipes um, for both the efficacy of the grid work itself and the safety of everyone else. I know that even for our grid work mission last week, I received a lot of emails of people asking if it was going to be safe for them to participate, asking me if they were going to be psychically attacked and all of those things. You know, of course, I operate from the perspective that I am a sovereign being and I am in connection with source. So nothing can harm me. I understand that this is a mastery um, embodied um state of being that requires self-healing and self-work to get to which is why we teach these things in the school but obviously i'm not going to be able to reply to all of those messages and support everyone that has those kinds of questions and so the best way that i can you know create that kind of support for everyone is through the school and so again we're going to have mass meditations that are going to be available for everyone to participate because some some missions just aren't going to be as intense as others and so this particular upcoming mission is going to be inside the womb healing container we are going to be addressing a 10d negative et technology that is directly connected to the sex sexual misery programs particular in the hieroscamos split trauma um, and so, you know, this information, regardless of whether or not you're going to be participating in that, th those of you who are, are getting the tingles in the back of the neck and up and down the spine and maybe in your womb, um, if you're feeling, you know, emotions already arising just from me transmitting this energy and talking about it, then maybe this is a good thing for you. But even if you're not going to be participating in this container because you're a male bodied person or because it's not quite the time yet for you to do, you know, this work, this information is still extremely important for you to know. And so my intention today is to basically explain what loosh harvesting is, how it happens, why it happens, and why the sexual misery program is so deep and rampant all over the, the planet. I'm going to explain, you know, what this programming is because I feel like sometimes we use these fancy words. We're like, oh, this specific kind of mind control. And you're like, how do I even know if I have that? How do I know if other people have that? I feel that if I'm able to explain and communicate in a simple way, this is not really rocket science. It's something that everyone can perceive um, if you could see through the right goggles. And so this is really what we're going to attempt to do today to bring awareness into those uh, spaces. Okay. And so... Let's just dive right on in. I'm so excited that you're all here. I'm sending my love out to all of our Starseed family across planet Earth. Um, this is going to be a strong start to our year of 2022, the master year. And so, you know, I'm just really stoked that you're all here and resonating with this work. I got a lot of beautiful messages from, you know, those of you that are new to my channel. I just want to send out a warm welcome to you. Um, you, you will notice that the chat in our community is just glowing with beauty and love you know you might even be surprised or bombarded by the love that you feel in our chat because um this is oftentimes not every chat that you find or every community you find online these days but i'm really so lucky i'm so blessed that our community is just you know <laughs> so full of love and everybody is just so excited to love on each other here it's just a vibe and we love that vibe and i'm just blessed for all of you in sharing and co-creating that okay so on that note we're feeling the love we're connecting to each other i do apologize that i'm not singing in the beginning of these videos as like i usually do i do that because it sets the field and puts us in a joyful and peaceful mode but I'm kind of in between places right now. Most of my belongings are packed up in a box. So in a month or so, I should be settled in my new place and uh, I should be able to transmit those songs again. And, and today I really tried to share a recording, like a little countdown thing, but my internet just was not cooperating. So um, I, I think that we, uh, at this point, um, the community is really holding that space regardless if I'm taking that step or not. So... Uh, we're going to dive on in. So first, we want to start with the normalization of suffering. So this is something that um, is a crucible or something that really holds the reality 
from the time we're young, I'm sure we've all seen those ads on TV of these poor kids in other countries and they're suffering so much. And in school, we're learning about these wars and, and you know, all of the things um, that has happened, the plagues and countries fighting each other, people dying, all these things in school to, you know, religion telling us that, you know, Christ was literally sacrificed and killed uh, for being a great guy. And, um, you know, in Eastern, the distorted Eastern religions, they will always often tell you that um, suffering is just an inherent um, part of life or part of reality. And while all of those things in tr are true, and while there are um, truths to the things that the Eastern religions teach, oftentimes these things are then twisted and taken out of context by the fallen religions um, and by the negative ETs and the controllers to weave a story that traps human consciousness to accept something as reality. And so the thing that we have normalized on this planet is suffering. We have normalized there being homeless people. We have normalized disease being untreatable. And we have normalized human trafficking. You know, when I was little, I remember my mom just grabbing onto me in public and saying, don't look at strangers. You know, they can pat you on the head and they'll kidnap you. And so I know that this is a common conscious and subconscious fear and agreement in common society that there is fear and suffering. And this is a normal part of our reality. Now, this is a part where we're doing or engaging the lucidity training to communicate to your conscious mind that these things are actually not normal. Um, what we think is, why we think is normal is because we've been told basically that all of these things came from the natural evolution of human society. We're being told that, oh, we don't know what human nature is. Maybe humans are evil. Maybe humans are nice. Maybe humans are violent. Maybe humans are just naturally mean to each other. And so over time, you know, the mean people became really greedy. And this is a cute little story, but it's absolutely not true. And it's hiding the fact that there has been, you know, these bloodlines and negative ETs that has been inserting these uh, realities into human populations for a long time. Because so long as there is a lot of suffering and fear and pain, humanity is not able to evolve on our proper evolutionary trajectory of becoming creator beings. Because if humanity were to completely become a divine creator race as we were intended or created to be, then obviously these negative ETs could no longer be in control of humans and our society and thus um, thus, uh, you know, siphon and take advantage of our abilities. Now, in previous videos, we talked about why human bodies and human beings, human beings, human beings are so highly coveted. Part of it has to do with our incredible multifaceted, multidimensional DNA. Our, it has to do with the stargates of this planet. You know, we're kind of being told that the earth is amongst billions of planets in, um, in the sky in the in the in space and that there's maybe nothing special about this planet or we're being told that humans are the only living you know beings in in the universe both of those things are slightly skewed in the grand scheme of things because the earth is a highly coveted and highly renowned place in the universe for its libraries of life forms and libraries of life templates, DNA templates that are stored in the life forms and in the trees and the plant kingdoms and all of these things. And for its very many and very advanced stargate system. So stargates allow souls and energies to travel from different places in the universe and into different dimensional realities and even to outside of this universe as well. And different planets, different coordinates in space have different stargates that take you different places, kind of like a highway system. So if you were in a highway um, that was, you know, in the center of New York City, you would be able to probably get anywhere else in North America from the highways that came out of the center of New York City. Whereas if you were in a very small place like rural New Mexico, then you would be on a country road that would eventually take you to a small hub of highways. And it's just um, a less advanced one that would take you to less spaces. And so when we're talking about the stargate systems in the universe, the Earth has highly advanced stargates that take you into very 
distant places, very extraordinary places, and even beyond this universe. And not all planets, not all galaxies even, have those kinds of stargates. That is why the Earth and our solar system is highly coveted, and why there's been so many galactic wars that have been fought over the control of this planet. Um, and now, the wars that are fought over this planet then would continue into human beings because human bodies were the original guardians that were literally created to be guardians and to be the uh, protectors and the operators of these stargates. In order for us to engage and to interact with the stargates, we need different strands of DNA. And so many of you may have heard the stories of how many different star people came together and wove their DNA strands into the human race, beings including the Syrians and the Pleiadians and the Arcturians and the Andromedans and all of these major um, beings in these systems. And the reason why those are the ones that we hear so often is because of the Stargate connection and how they were the races that came together to weave their DNA strands into the humans so that we would be able to operate this immense um, planet full of incredible stargates. So places where these, you know, old stargate system includes basically all places you have heard that there are major wards, places like Iraq, Iran, which is one of the most um, major stargates that are holding the specific creational templates in place for this this uh, this galaxy and this coordinate in the universal body. Um, this is also the Stargate that's holding the feminine and masculine balance on this planet. And we can see the kind of war that happens in Iraq, Iran. It's about um, the earth, it's about oil, it's about um, <laughs> the societal wars that are waged there are about patriarchy, right? About, you know, um, this extreme level of patriarchy where women have to be completely covered and they are you know being sold off into marriage as young kids that are like 10 years old and all of these kinds of distortions in society are deeply ingrained in that culture because these energies directly are in opposition to the original currents of those stargates and i hope what i'm saying is making sense um i'd love to get a little bit of feedback on that. I hope that we're not going too far too deep, too fast. Uh, so we're just going to take a brief pause here as I read through some of these comments here. Teehee. Okay. Yes. So what is housed here is one of the most powerful stargates or what had been one of the most powerful stargates on this planet and that is particularly in control of the creation energies so that moves us right into what we're talking about today because every single person on the planet we are a whole system right we are designed in reflection of source which are a um polarity creation system this means that there's feminine creation energy and masculine creation energy and these energies exist not separately but completely integrated kind of like the yin yang symbol right in the yin yang symbol there is masculine or yang inside the yin and yin energy inside the yang and this is symbolizing that there's really actually not two separate forces but qualities of forces which are completely integrated that are creating uh, energy together all the time. And so part of this uh, system that has been um, creating a lot of pain and a lot of drama in the universe has been the Hieroscamo split programs. These energies that are seeking to reverse or um, change the quality of the feminine energy and the masculine energy and even to split them and as i'm saying this I, I do apologize if any of the things that i speak sometimes can be very triggering into deep traumas just know that there's support in this field as the transmission is coming through from our galactics that are actually holding space for the transformation and the healing of these things and so it is important for us to just take um this moment and to kind of shed light on these things 
um, because this is helping us with our lucidity training to realize that we really can and have really deep work to do. <laughs> My dog is knocking on the door. So, okay. Thank you. <laughs> Go bed. <laughs> Okay. Okay, so what we're understanding, what we're trying to understand is that there are very many dimensions in which energy and consciousness exist. And the 3D that is what we're experiencing here and what we feel and what we sense with our five physical senses, it's just um, one dimensional perception of reality. And when we begin to learn to perceive the subtler realms and to perceive the other dimensions of reality, we realize that there is actually more to this false matrix than, you know, just the TV or just the shopping mall or just the pharmaceutical industry, which is often the things that we talk about, right, in the disclosure community. In the disclosure community, we'll talk about the cabal and all the physical human people that have been involved in the prisoning and the imprisonment of humanity. But without this higher dimensional understanding, um, we're actually basically regurgitating and just saying what we see in the 3D without any ability to do anything about it. Because what gives us the ability to shift the reality is by connecting to our higher dimensional self and our unified, coherent, universal aspects of ourself. And so this is why um, in our school, we focus a lot on subtle energy training and multidimensionality. Because at this point in my life, just as a reflection, my 7D Andromedan aspect that came in was the first one. And so then I begin to integrate other dimensional aspects of myself as well. So for example, I have an architect um, who, you know, has a specialty in designing, um, you know, ascended cities. And this is a part uh, of me that resides in the Pleiades. And then I have another one that keeps, um, you know, knowledge and is a teacher of universal architectural knowledge. And this is an aspect that resides in the Syrian frequency. And so this is a matrix or a multidimensional system that actually we all have. We all have aspects of ourselves that are in other dimensions that are actually carrying the information and the gifts that we need to complete our mission. So obviously this channel is very specific. If you are somebody that stumbled upon here, um, you're like, what the heck is she talking about? I just want to say that, um, you know, this is specific information um, regarding star season, the star seed mission for those of you that really feel like you're here to create heaven on earth and that you're here to support humanity and this planet to the creation of heaven on earth, or some people call it the new earth. If you have that innate desire, then this information is meant for you. Not everybody has that innate desire. Not everybody is aware of that at all. And so even if you have no idea what I'm talking about, but you know that you're here to help create a new earth, don't worry, we got you covered because this is what the Earth Star Academy is here for, is to help you fill in that information that gets us from here to create a new Earth because sometimes we think about our mission and about creating heaven on Earth, but then we're looking outside and it's craziness. We're like, A and B, how do we get there? And so essentially this information, as we're talking about, you know, these different programs, um, we're also talking about the technologies or the um, intentions or the beings or the systems that are keeping that not heaven on earth in place. And when we can understand that, we can begin to dismantle those systems inside of ourself. This is the most important part because when we disassemble the false matrix from inside of our own consciousness, which is essentially what all of this is about right? We have to begin to realize that we have been living inside of a reversed satanic society that was designed to imprison human consciousness. 
okay? We have all been living inside of a society and a world, unless you were born, you know, in a native community out in the middle of the forest, completely not in touch with modern civilization, which I've yet to really meet, you know, anyone that, you know, watches these on a weekly basis and has access to a computer and stuff uh, and the internet, I've, I've not really met many of those people that, you know, frequent this community. So I'm going to say for the most part, most of us grew up, most, most of us, most of us grew up, <laughs> what's going on here? Block user. Thank you very much. Okay, most of us grew up in the false matrix and we were um, programmed and we grew up with certain things that we believed was normal. So for example, going to school was normal and being little and being told that these are the things that happen in history and this is the way that you can make money and this is the way, you know, my, my dad, for example, he worked really hard for his whole life and he didn't really get to enjoy himself. Most people think that, you know, you have to trade your time and energy. You have to trade your life force energy to survive on this planet. All of these things that we have normalized, they're actually not normal and they're actually a part of the mind control that keeps humanity inside of a prison. Now, once you realize that, you realize that that prison has actually affected every single one of us very profoundly. Um, it's not just that, you know, we have to save the children or we have to put these, you know, corrupt politicians in jail. Yes, we have to do all those things. But the thing that we have to do the most is to actually heal our consciousness and our soul and our body that has been abused inside of the satanic society for all of our life. And the reason why this is so important is because, you know, a lot of things in the new age and the disclosure community, they are created by the CIA to distract us. They are created by the CIA to specifically target people inside of our community to basically waste our time and energy focusing on something outside of ourself instead of actually disassembling the mind control, right? You don't hear very many people talking about the internal biological and bio-spiritual ways the false matrix has, you know, hurt humanity. And for very many years, I knew that this was what my mission was. And I was kind of confused as to why more people weren't really talking about this dimension of things. And then I realized the reason was because, you know, when I first woke up back in 2013, it was like something took over me and all I could do was heal myself. I literally spent four to six hours a day meditating, scanning my body, clearing myself of mind control. And I became aware of how I thought during the day, how I interacted, how I talked. I became aware of how I spent my time and how I was treating myself and others. And once you develop this part of you that is self-aware consistently, you realize that we begin to realize that we're actually not authentic most of the time, right? It's like we're trained to be nice and we're trained to do things that we don't like and we're trained to do things um, in ways that, you know, our parents would think is good or our school would think is good. And over a long period of time, we don't even know, you know, what our authentic soul feels like. And this is all part of the 3D matrix prison system. And so oftentimes I get messages, people messaging me saying like, oh, you know, I feel like of people that are in the community, I feel like you're so authentic. I feel like there's just this authentic energy coming from you. Well, it's not by accident, right? I've just literally spent the last, you know, seven years diligently healing myself. I know that it took a lot of effort and a lot of time because I was totally this cookie cutter, perfect, you know, Chinese girl that was really good at school, that was going to succeed in life in all of these different ways. And so it was really hard to bend myself out of certain behaviors and ways of being. Um, and the only way that I was able to kind of carve my way out of the false matrix was by excavating all of these layers of myself. Now, even if full disclosure happened and all of humanity knew about the cabal and the pedophiles and all that stuff, we're still going to have to heal. Even if aliens came and just told us everything and, you know, healed our planet, we're still going to have to heal. The thing that we just can't really have done for us is the restoration of our DNA and our consciousness. 
Can things help? Certainly, right? The sound chambers are even a technology that is coming through to help us heal and help us restore the template of our DNA and our light body. However, there's just some things that require for our participation, require for our diligent exertion, something that matters. What matters? Why is it important that we help this planet is because souls are made to be sovereign and made in God's image to be divine, right? And creatively fulfilled and all of those things. And so if we want humanity to remember our source and what we're created to experience, then we as star seeds and the light workers would have to begin to embody those things ourselves because we're carving the way, right? And this is why my work as a way shower, my way as a path cutter has uh, led me to basically to becoming obsessed with healing myself because at a certain point any level of ai or disingenuity or um, inauthenticity or just like these little viral programs like i could hear it in my voice i could hear it in my voice box i could feel it in my thoughts like if it wasn't really my thought but it was like that weird programmed thing that was running through my system like it would i would feel it and i would not be able to change it because it was still in there and in that between place of me clearing it and healing it and just feeling it in my body was very uncomfortable and it was a feeling of being trapped it was a feeling of being trapped inside of my own body that was being used and abused by the society that was created to trap me inside of it to siphon my energy and so all of those things propelled me even further because it really It's only through those internal physical experiences that we really gain the compassion for humanity, right? When I see people saying, oh man, like humans are so dumb, I can't believe they're still asleep. I know that those people have not really done the inner work because no person that has been diligently healing themselves um, would say anything like that because people that do diligently heal themselves, they know how hard it is. They know how tricky these programs have inserted themselves into human consciousness. And so they know how hard it is to actually go in and feel those levels of the vile spiritual abuse that has occurred on humans um, internally. And so when we have those experiences, it's impossible to judge people outside because we realize that, wow, I'm literally here to support humanity through this level of healing. You know, it's no longer about the matrix or taking a color of pill. It's so much deeper and more profound and complex, complex and multifaceted than that. Um, whew, we're just going on. We're going on a. We're going on a ride. <laughs> going on a ride today. Okay, and so. Okay, all that is a preface (laughs) Um, because actually the place inside of my system that I've had the most difficult time healing has been the sexual misery programs. This is probably among the most vicious and most, you know, vile and the most difficult system to heal from. And it's been so normalized. Um, We're going to try to um, pinpoint, you know, where it exists and and why it exists so first of all a program sexual misery programming the programming part of this term speaks to a certain kind of mind control a certain kind of structure of consciousness or a certain geometry of energy or a certain shape of energy inside the body inside the light body is usually a set of beliefs or a set of thought patterns right? And it contains, they're created basically to contain humans inside of a frequency fence, right? So in the case of sexual misery programming, we're talking about um, this geometry or structure of consciousness of sexual pain or sexual misery. So this is actually really deep, okay? I see this in the extremes as sometimes, you know, not few times, actually often, because my work does have to do with women, and I work with a lot of women. I've worked with hundreds of women this year. We do a lot of sexual healing work, 
And I get this message actually not rarely that people will say, you know, oh, I have to fantasize or I can't get aroused. And I have to fantasize about, you know, kind of violent things like, you know, rape fantasies or different kinds of things like that. And I know that is weird and I know it doesn't feel right in my body, but the only way I'm able to actually get aroused is if I were to engage in thought patterns that are in that frequency. Um, I know that this happens more um, even in men because men are specifically targeted to ex express their sexuality in a more dominant and particularly violent way that hurts women and they've been patterned or mind controlled to feel arousal through the control and the um, wounding of women versus the other way around. So this is what is called a reversal. Things that have been taken, right, organic systems that are taken and literally flipped backwards. So when we think about sex, it's supposed to be something that is full of joy and pleasure and creativity and comfort. It's something that's supposed to bring our body ease and delight. And yet, in our society, there's this weird kind of neurotic pattern around violence and pain. And you can see how this system is particularly inserted into violent pornography, right? Think of how much weird, perverted, violent pornography there exists in the world. Now, I do a lot of quantum work. Um, one time I actually engaged in this quantum work with two other Oracle women. We journeyed I uh, basically would meditate and, and journey through our psychic senses to other realms. And we journeyed to this particular portal together near Portland, Oregon. And we found this massive AI device in the astral plane that was tagged. And um, basically, when a person sees pornography of a specific a brand, uh, pornography that was created by these specific negative ETs and a lot of the themes that were in that kind of uh, in that particular frequency of pornography had to do with um, uh, violence particularly but also you know kind of like underage um, energies you know like this weird perversion around younger uh, perversion uh, and pedophilia and also around incest, this particular, you know, I could read all of these things in this negative ET um, energy siphoning station. And every time that, you know, anyone came up upon this pornography, you know, think about how tricky this is, right? Because when people watch pornography, it literally opens up their energy system because they're feeling that arousal. Now, arousal is literally our life force energy. It's coming through the root, the root chakra, which is taking in, is our access point, is our plug into the organic reality. So what it's literally doing is taking our source energy that's supposed to flow into our body and it's plugging it into one of these etheric energy siphoning devices. Now, um, then human energy trafficking in the astral plane happens. Sometimes people just actually become absolutely addicted to these kinds of pornography because their energy is being trafficked and they're being abducted and, you know, their energy is being totally hijacked by that experience. Now, um, for most people that, you know, don't get to that level of addiction, when they engage and they see these patterns, like humans are um, designed literally to learn through seeing things and through imitation there I think it's called mirror neurons right and this is how young people and children often begin to learn when they enter into the world so when we see a certain energy pattern that's being shown on either tv or in this case we're talking about pornography we will literally begin to imitate that geometry and we begin to actually mold believe it or not our light body begins to mold to those shapes of consciousness inside what we're looking at, okay? And so it's even more tricky with pornography because of the way that our energy body is being directly interacted with as pornography is playing. And so most people will become aroused. And this is how certain arousal programming can happen. I've seen these implants that literally go in underneath the corpus callosum 
in the spine, in the tail, in the uterine wall. And, you know, I, I don't work on men's body, but I imagine is a similar anatomy. And these uh, implants are literally engaging with the nervous system and sending responses through the nervous system. And this is how people then get into these distorted systems of arousal. Like why? And this, I think the silliest thing is that, you know, sometimes people can be programmed to be aroused at the sight of sock puppets, just things that are completely irrational and not natural and not really uh, organic at all. Basically, these implants are able to control the response, especially the arousal response of our body. And they're inserted through these, for, through our ocular system, and through our energy system, and through the astral system that tags in when we engage with these systems. Now, you might be thinking, I don't watch porn anymore, or, you know, maybe I'm not, I've never watched porn. Let's say that. I've never watched porn, and so I must be safe. Now, Here's the craziest thing. This kind of programming is deeply infested in the Hollywood popular big media systems. Okay, we're talking about when I grew up, it was Britney Spears and Christina Aguilera and Backstreet Boys, I guess, right? All of these, you will see, you know, you might ask yourself, why is Hollywood consistently emitting things that are so sexual? Okay. Um, I was once sent out to a grid work, grid work mission, um, going to, uh, <laughs> this is kind of a funny story and it's in my book, but I basically get pulled to this Ariana Grande concert and it was hilarious because three days before this concert, I had no idea who she was. I mean, I don't watch TV. I don't really engage in any popular media. It's been like almost a decade that I've lived outside of that system. So I had no idea who Ariana Grande was. And three days before this concert, she was everywhere. Every billboard, every wall, everywhere I looked, there was this being that I never seen before. And then all of a sudden, my Spotify comes on one day and it's her song playing. And I, I see, I'm like, what is this disgusting? You know, I'm, I'm very sensitive to sound frequencies. And so when the song came on, I'm like, oh my God, what is this vile garbage? And so I... Uh, I grab my phone, I see in this Ariana Grande, I'm like, I've been seeing this being's face. And then out of nowhere, I got a call from my ex-boyfriend. And it's funny because this particular ex-boyfriend and I were definitely karmically experiencing a lot of fallen sexual energies, particularly so I can learn all about that um, and attachment and trauma bonding and all of those things. Um, but he calls me out of the blue and he's like, hey, I've got an extra ticket to Ariana Grande concert. And I was like, I think I'm meant to go, <laughs> right? It was just all a series of very strange circumstance. And so I was very lucky because as soon as I walked into the stadium, I knew I was there for grid work because what happens is my multidimensional light body system will turn on and I'll begin to access and perceive and feel interdimensional energy all the way through my system. And I was able to basically perceive the concert through my multidimensional lens, which I had a great time doing, even though it really sucked. Because as one thing, you know, I've already known all of these things through just my basic um, interaction of growing up in the Western culture. Like I said, I grew up listening. I, I didn't even listen. It was just like when the TV's on, these people would come up, right? And I, I consider these things um, societal sexual abuse. Okay, so this is very important because you might think, well, you know, oh, it's normal, um, but it's absolutely not normal that your TV is on and you're five years old and Britney Spears is just singing on the, the TV about how she's a slave and she's just being all sexy and stuff. It's like that is abuse. That's sexual abuse. That is societally entrained sexual abuse. And it's very important that we point this out because so many people come to me and they say, well, I've never really experienced physical sexual abuse, but I definitely still have weirdness around sex. And I definitely feel like kind of stuck and dis, um, not able to connect to my authentic sexuality. And maybe I've been abducted. And sometimes they are, but most of the time, we're just not able to acknowledge that just existing in our society is probably a form of sexual abuse because we've been exposed to distorted images of sexuality without our consent as young people that are learning, right? As little four or five-year-olds. And so that was very disturbing at this concert. 
first of all, um, it's one thing to have that understanding cognitively and theoretically, but to be at this concert and to see it with my own eyes obviously pulled it into another level of integration and another level of lucidity because when I walked in there, there was just like a sea of six to 14 year old girls. And all of these girls were either dressed skimpily or had makeup on in this like very uh, exaggerated way. And the whole concert, I mean, it kind of makes me uh, nauseous talking about it, but Ariana Grande was on stage and she was in these skimpy outfits. Like at some point she was singing about her daddy. And I, I was like weaving this ginormous, you know, light jellyfish thing. And I was covering all of these kids' heads to keep this frequency from entering their mind. Um, because, I mean, I was just absolutely repulsed. And so I kept hearing the word moon chain lineage. And this is something that happens often for those of you that are connected in with um with lisa renee's work i particular particularly i'm not um to read things really a lot i don't go on there and i read stuff i don't really read books either because it's really important for my information to come directly from myself my own senses but what happens sometimes is when i'm uh, grid working that I'll hear keywords, and then I'll be guided to look in the Ascension glossary, those specific words to confirm, right? So it's my source of validation um, to, and it just is really great to know that I'm not absolutely bonkers, because imagine you're just like out there doing this stuff, and aliens are talking to you, and you don't, you know, know of any other people that are doing this, and you're like, I think I just have lost my marbles. But in those situations, it has been extremely helpful to go on Ascension glossary, and to look up these things, and it was also super beautiful to have um, Lisa reach out to me in the beginning of the year, uh, last year, um, and she basically just told me that she recognized my being and she welcomed me to the mission here on Earth, and it was really, really sweet. So uh, she's kind of my hero in a lot of ways just because of all the work that she has done, and so it was just a really wonderful uh, experience. So I'm at this concert and I'm scanning this being, right? I'm looking at her, I'm scanning her body. I'm like, what is this? What is this being? And particularly, I'm trying to figure out if she's just a highly controlled soul or if she's some other sort of biologically manifested being that does not have a soul. Like I was just really trying to figure this out. Um, and in the end, I kind of decided, it kind of felt like she... Um, was primarily a biological um created and genetically put together uh being that that's biological but we we don't um anyway i, <laughs> I don't really want to share too much about that um but uh as soon as i saw that um i had this phrase come into my ear and it, it said moon chain lineage so i grabbed my phone and i went on ascension glossary and i typed in moon chain lineage and i kid you not you know you guys can go look this up but basically the moon chain lineage are these um beings that were genetically created by the certain faction of negative ets for the perpetuation and for the dissemination of sexual misery programming and so you can't really make this stuff up right? Like moon chain lineage is not a word that exists in my brain. And I was just at this concert and I'm perceiving everything. And all of a sudden I get this, you know, instruction to look this up and, you know, find this article on the internet of that somebody else had written about part like specifically this theory I was formulating in my brain. So that's pretty cool. So you can see how that can be very affirming, right? But, um, so that was very, um affirming to read and of course then i'm looking around and it's all making sense right because the songs that she's singing she's a great example of what sexual misery program is but also you know people like britney spears and these previous generations of these beings are also a great example and of course pornography is another great example of how this program works but essentially is this reversal that love is pain 
that sexuality is shameful, disgusting, dirty, um, and even worse, violent, you know, a source of pain, that pain is somehow sexy, that violent sex is somehow, you know, normal, and even the sexualization of um, parental figures and, you know, all of those weird, oh, ugh, so just <laughs> wave of nausea there, okay? Okay, so how how is this, like, why is it this that is so prominent, right? This is really important to know because it's not by accident. It's not that, you know, by accident the elites, they're just sick. It's, it's, I mean, they are sick, but, you know, there is a multidimensional reason why sexual energy is being manipulated in this way. And the reason is there's two, uh, there's two access points to interdimensional energy. Actually, there's three, but these two are in the heart. And obviously, actually, all chakras. So <laughs> what I'm trying to say is that there's two main places in which we plug into the organic matrix as a life force being. So the first place is our crown chakra that kind of connects us into the higher dimensions through um, higher frequencies and through consciousness. And we're able to journey through consciousness into other realms. This is like the higher chakra way of connecting in with multidimensional life force energy. The other end of the spectrum is our root chakra, right? Our womb chakra or our sexual organs. This is the place where we connect into the universal primordial life force energy. So these two centers are what connects us into the earth and star realms of our totality. <laughs> just did that weird Taoist thing that, that just I do sometimes. But anyway, the main thing is that if our crown is totally blocked from connecting to high dimensional source energies and our root is totally blocked from connecting to original organic life force energy, then what happens? We're capped, right? And what that cap is, is our when we're disconnected from organic energy, we are basically then projecting ourselves through into a, a separate reality. I hope that makes sense. So if we're not connected and we're not cycling energy through source and through the earth and through life force that's organic to the earth, then we're basically projecting our energy into a separate artificial realm. This artificial realm is what we're calling the false matrix. It's basically this reality where there's cement and Walmart and McDonald's and school and the IRS and the government and the you know what virus is going on out there, right? This is the false matrix that, you know, the reason why people wholeheartedly believe in the truth and the reality of this is because their crown is totally clogged through religious programming and through the television and through, you know, all sorts of those things. And their lower chakras are blocked from the sexual misery program. And there's other, there's other traumas in the lower chakras as well, but this is probably the main one, right? When we're not able to connect to our original, authentic life force arousal energy, we're not able to channel that original pure energy through our body and we're basically stagnant or stale in this false, fallen reality, okay? So deep breath here, just uh, integrate this for a moment. Whew. Okay, so the sexual misery program was probably the most painful system that I've had to heal inside of my own system by far. I think the reason is that most people you know, we're really so disconnected from our essence self that we don't even feel the pain of being disconnected to it, right? We're just so used to not being ourselves. We're just so used to not feeling happy and content inside of our own body. We're just so used to feeling like we don't love ourselves. And even, you know, that's another major program that is normalized in our society is the anti-self programming, anti-self virus. So the anti-self virus 
basically is the one that normalizes, you know, body shaming and insecurity and I'm not good enough and jealousy and comparison and anything that basically makes it normal that we hate ourselves. Okay. This is a very insidious program as well, because when we hate ourselves or when we are disconnected from ourselves or when we create that separation between ourself and ourself, it makes it easy for entities and plugs to come in, right? That's why it exists, is that when we reject our own energy, it gives permission for something else to siphon. Um, it gives permission for something else to come into our body because we have rejected it. We're saying, we don't want this body. It's imperfect. It's not beautiful. I don't like it. And that rejection basically gives permission and allows access for other beings and entities to come into our body. And so we can see how this program also is just widely infested in our society. Okay. Because, you know, it's literally designed to make humanity, you know, reject ourself. And that allows us to be controlled very easily. But, whew, this particular, the sexual misery program has been the most difficult to heal um, because it, first of all, it took many, many, many years before I actually um, cultivated enough self-love and presence in my body to even address it because of the amount of pain there is in the body. So a good way to check if you need to heal around your sexuality is if you feel connected to it. If your sexual organs um, are a part of your consciousness. <laughs> I know that sounded kind of weird. Let me see if I can explain this better. Because even the fact that in our society, you know, we basically, we call them private parts, which, you know, I think is good that people have parts to themselves. I'm not saying that everybody should just be out there naked all the time. But what I'm saying is that there's this kind of shame and hiddenness. It's like, oh, you know, it's almost like, you know, everyone has these parts, but we can't talk about it. And and maybe people don't have these parts. Like maybe we don't even have them. Um, we're, we're not supposed to talk about them. Something about it needs to be hush hush and bad and wrong. There's something, you know, bad and ashamed and shameful and wrong about any arousal or energy that comes from it. And I think that this is a lot worse in men, this program. They like to make men feel that when men are aroused, that this is wrong, that they need to feel bad about themselves, that they should be embarrassed. Um, and, you know, I feel, and I know that any troll watching this out there would probably want to just spin my words and be like, this is what Zero Star said. But um, <laughs> it's kind of a, that's kind of a risk that you take when you start putting yourself <laughs> there right um but no i've lost my train of thought okay let's let's just focus for a second okay it's not coming back and if it's important it will but what we're talking about here is the importance of feeling our sexual organs and so if throughout the day you just kind of live over here and your reality is over here and you just completely forget that you have sexual organs or you feel sensation from your sexual organs or you can go like a month without feeling arousal or feeling sexual energy at all and this is just your normal then you probably need to work around this and some of you will say well i'm not i'm just maybe not a sexual person or even people that are older you know especially people that are older that are post-menopausal they're like oh I'm not, you know, that's like young people stuff, you know, I'm not here to work um, on my sexual energy anymore. So as long as we are alive, so long as these bodies are alive, sexual energy is what's, you know, animating our body and animating our cells. And so, so long as you're alive, even if you're 90 years old, working with the sexual energy is still possible if you're still interested in healing and working on yourself in any way like that. Um, another way that I, um, kind of gauge if people need sexual healing is, you know, of course, how comfortable you feel when we are talking about your sexual organs. Um, not in this, like, there doesn't need to be a sexual frequency. And by, that's kind of weird in itself. There doesn't have to be like a sexual frequency to sexuality. But what I mean is that perverted kind of like weird, um, 
expression that people think is being like seductive or it needs to create some sort of response it could just be you know aside from all of those nuances it's just the feeling of warmth and love the feeling of pleasure and joy and, and life force the feeling of being nourished right the feeling that energy is nourishing our body this warmth that flows through our cells that makes our somatic body feel comforted and loved and like it's in a universe of abundance this is the original sexual energy that is being cut from us to perpetuate this feeling of of lack in our world of anxiety and fear and scarcity um as my Taoist ancestors and I believe that if all people were, you know, flowing their creation energy through their body and had full access to their own creation energy and not just siphoning it and leaking it and, you know, not, not even knowing how to capitalize on their own energy at all, um, if all people had this knowledge of how life force flows through their body, there would be no, this external manifestation of lack and scarcity because everything's holographic and we're the creators of our world because we are experiencing this lack of life force energy in our body we see that in mass external in our external reality so those of you that you know want to fix world poverty how do we fix world poverty by reclaiming all of our abundance inside of our life force body right inside of our life body and we do this by reclaiming all of our sexual energy now you're going to notice as soon as you reclaim all of your sexual energy you're going to be inspired <laughs> to do things you're going to be inspired to make things with your hands and write things down and create things it's just going to become this natural expression outwards this natural outward emanation of that internal abundance that we have and this is the way that we begin to create heaven on earth um, this is the organic way. It comes from inside of us. This is how we become the source of this reality. It begins metaphysically, right? It begins as a thought. It begins as a feeling where we're radiating that love energy into the field and we're shifting the hologram. And as we pull that ability all the way through our physical vessel, we begin to create companies and organizations and we begin to create abundance. If every single person, all 331 of you that are tuning in live here, all 333 now, if every single one of us created a million dollar business through the love that we have for the world, through healing people, right? Through bringing joy and bringing love and bringing God and bringing all of this, this knowledge that people are missing so much. If every single one of us created that abundance and then poured it right back into the world, we would be able to create heaven on earth in no time. And you know, this is what, we're going to do this is how we're doing it is multifaceted because not only are we i mean for me it doesn't making money is not the focus creating those organizations not even the focus right these visions of these healing centers my guys have shown me these hundreds of healing centers that we're going to be building on this planet but that's not even the focus because if I were just to be focused on what I'm here to make mentally and not actually support my energy system to being able to facilitate it, then this is where I get stuck in just the thinking about the future. And I'm sure we're all very much uh, aware of what that can feel like because this is the most common question I get asked. You know, Z, I've always wanted to create this book. I've always wanted to create this healing center. I've always wanted to create this retreat center. Why is it just not happening? Well, probably because we're trying to skip steps, right? We're trying to do a future step when what we have to do right now is to bring complete healing and coherence and learn, relearn, remember, and reawaken our body's natural ability to channel infinite creation energy. And this is exactly the thing that the sexual misery program is literally just neutralizing, right? Because our root chakra and our sexual energy and how we perceive it and how we experience it is our relationship to ourself, is our relationship to our own sense of ability to be able to create. So long as most people 
have this subconscious belief that sex is pain, that, you know, if I express my sexuality, then I'll be slutty because all I've been shown is a slutty frequency of what sexuality can be, right? Then as long as people have those subconscious locks around the sexual energy, we're not able to channel that creativity into what we choose. So we don't have the free will to create what we were given the free will to create as creator beings on this planet. Right? And so, you know, this is the tricky thing because there are so many willing and able people in our community that are that know that we're here to do um to make a difference, but for the most part, we're kind of like disempowered and there's so many programs working against us that were literally designed to take away our sense of power. It's just really tricky. Um, so um, I definitely feel really excited because this is kind of exactly what me as a scientist I'm here to do. My work here on the planet is exactly in perceiving and dissecting these kinds of programs and then creating the antidote frequencies for them. Um, you know, I, I am working on a manual and a book right now called Advanced Lightwork where I'm cataloging these things. And I'm also creating a catalog of sound chambers that address these specific things. I will be releasing um, those things for free because I believe that medicine needs to be shared and everything else that I'm doing is bonus, right? This is kind of what I'm focusing on. Um, the anti-self viruses and the sexual misery viruses and the religious programming viruses, I mean, these things are really things that have been normalized in our world that, again, are just absolutely not normal. And we are totally here to uh, shed light on them and to begin to translate this information into a language that humans can understand, which I think is so powerful. You know, in my work with humanity, I'm currently working on a book that is outside of this new age community that is more created for mass humanity. And it is a project that is supported and overlighted by Kuan Yin. But essentially what she shared with me is that, you know, a lot of people want to go out there and just start yelling at the humans about the cabal and all this stuff. But when we're not trauma informed, um, we find that we are met with a lot of resistance right? People say, oh, you got tinfoil hats on, and I don't know what you're talking about. Sometimes their eyes just blaze over. You ever notice that? You're trying to talk to somebody about, you know, awakening or some sort of conspiracy theory, and their eyes literally just glaze over, and they hear nothing that you say, or yet, even better, they just literally fall asleep. So we have to learn how to communicate with people, because we want to be effective, right? A lot of people are like, well, they're stupid. They're just not listening. Like they don't want to wake up. And that's just not true. They're under so many layers of mind control and their light bodies are so clogged up that we really need to just um, figure out different ways to communicate because that is our job. That's why we're down here, right? As light workers, as we get more integrated, we realize that we can change the way that we behave and change the way that we communicate to be of service instead of needing humans to validate us. So this is a place where that integration occurs. Um, and so, you know, I find that the more embodied and grounded our human self is, the easier it is for us to communicate with human beings. Um, and so somebody was saying that the sound is off so i'm checking my mic here you guys let me know if the sound is working and if you can still hear me okay great okay and so this upcoming um grid work mission here that's coming in it is um, going to be contained in this womb healing container. It is a container for women. If you can't join this container for some reason, don't worry. The knowledge that's going to be held inside this container is going to be completely available on ESA. And I've also spoken a lot about these codes in all of my YouTube videos. And so, you know, if you... Um, for whatever reason can't join, definitely don't feel like 
you know, the, the teachings are locked away from you for any reason. Maybe it's just not quite time yet for you to coordinate with these specific set of teachings. It is going to be a pretty intensive class, but essentially the grid work component that's coming in for this one is dismantling a reversal light technology in 10D that was created to contain and to distort human sexual energy and to hijack particularly the goddess energy. Now, you'll find that a lot of the um, programs on Earth, oh yeah, and we forgot to talk about patriarchy. So this is actually a really big thing that we should talk about because patriarchy itself is a sexual misery program, okay? Patriarchy is not what men are doing to women. Um, any conversation around patriarchy saying, oh, it's the men that are bad and they did this to women. And, oh, women, you know, we're, you know, we now we have to rise up and beat the men. Like all of that is still the sexual misery program. Anything that seeks to divide and pit the feminine and masculine against each other and say one is better than the other, one's more important, one's more powerful, anything like that, it's part of the program because the two actually exist completely in perfect unison and eternal love for, with each other that, you know, any level of separation in those forces are part of the misery program. And so I want to preface that because I know that this is a really touchy subject in our reality and for exactly the reason that the, the elites do not want us to talk about it, okay? The elites want us to have to walk on eggshells and be super sensitive and be afraid that somebody's going to cancel us and throw us out a window if we were to, you know, stand up to these silly tricks that are being placed into society. But essentially, you know, patriarchy is a program that has programmed the men and the women in different ways to express the same agenda of harvesting human sexual creation energy and keeping humans from being able to create a civilization and create the reality that we want okay so the more that we can unify and realize that we have all been duped and that certain groups of us were used as the abusers <laughs> and certain one of us were used as the victim so long as we stay divided and humanity can't unite to see the common enemy we will be perpetuating the system, okay? And so, whew, just taking a moment here, there's a lot of energy flowing through. So basically, the patriarchal energy, the patriarchal program in men is to basically kind of um, cut their connection to their emotions and to their inner feminine and to their sense of um sensitivity and this is largely perpetuated also by the circumcision circumcision that occurs the fact that we literally just you know sexually abuse babies when they come into the world and normalize that is beyond me okay my brain literally splats around that because i can't believe in the 20 first century that you know we're doing that and it's still normalized but essentially in Taoist anatomy we realize that the tip of the penis is actually correspondent to the heart organ okay so this is how deep this societal program goes the sexual misery program okay sexual pain program if we just literally stab a boy in the heart as soon as they come out into the world what do we think is going to happen to our society they're disconnected from their emotions, right? And I can feel that collective agony that's coming up. I'm just sending out a big hug to all the men who are here in this room. Sending a big hug to all the boys and the men that are in this community here. I, I honor you. I know that this journey is has been hard for you as well. I know that a lot of information is out there for women and, you know, the abuse that's happened to women. But there's not a lot of acknowledgement that often happens because... It's absolutely abnormal and not natural for men to desire violence and to harm women at all, okay? A natural, organic male being desires, have this natural desire to love and support and protect women because we're a unified creation. We're all the same creature. And so in a village, for example, in the ancient times, 
the men had such fulfillment. You know, they were strong. They felt such fulfillment in protecting the women whose bodies are just anatomically less strong. It's not about better or worse. It's just about the different roles that we have. So, you, you know, you, you need to have a sub subtler, su subtler, <laughs> you need to have a, a softer body to mold and shift as you become pregnant and literally just open a portal and bring a soul into this world, right? You just needed softer bones, softer cartilage, softer muscles. And in order for that to happen, the men had to be both it differently so that they could protect life and to support the village all of these things are not um mythical they're not theoretical it's just reality and so you know the fact that we now have men catcalling and you know the sexual abuse levels are going up and all these things is absolutely not normal and has been um a result of sexual misery programming and particularly the patriarchy programming in which circumcision is a huge plays a huge part um now i have worked with men in rebuilding the etheric components of the foreskin and to build the reconnection build uh, the etheric connection between the heart and the tip of the penis and all of this work can be done and um, exercises there are exercises you can do as well to enhance the nerves in the tip of the penis as well because i know that when they do perform the circumcision they actually remove a lot of the nerves that are in the tip of the penis and of course this is connected to our ability to be vulnerable right our ability to feel our feelings because our anatomy and our physical body is so deeply connected to our emotions and our consciousness okay and that's why you know when we're doing sessions i can almost always source a emotional trauma just from sensing the body i'm very kinesthetic when i do sessions so i'll always just feel i'll be like oh there's something stored in your shoulder there's something stored in your liver so all of these energies are so interwoven in our system especially our sexual organs okay and so it's just absolutely cruel and horrendous that this is what they're doing to you know our baby boys um and so whew, in order to help a child clear the trauma of circumcision um there's a couple of things that you can do i would recommend um learning how to do quantum journeys again all of these things you know are i'm going to teach you in really simple forms in isa for 89 dollars a month but you're going to learn how to run subtle energy frequencies and do quantum journeying because it's not rocket science it's really stuff that every human being should be born into the society and be taught right these are stuff is how to take care of your body and how to exist in this world and how to take care of yourself all these things should really be shared with children as they're born but when you begin to learn how to quantum journey you can go back to the time of this happening and you can just as soon as the split happens you can reconnect the system and you can begin to run energy through the sexual organs and the heart you can begin to weave etheric um you can begin to weave the etheric foreskin and all of these things um whoo again they, there's gonna be um support coming in around that but i feel that ultimately these people these kids are gonna have to do that work themselves when they grow up like there's just some things that they will have to feel and come to terms with, right? It's like, you're just gonna have to come to terms with the fact that you came into this world and these people did that to you. Like, these are things that internally people are gonna have to come to terms with, you know, regardless of what parents are gonna do. So men have been sexually abused as well. Yep. Yeah, so the weekend before um, Valentine's Day, I'm going to be running a two-day healing ceremony for men and women, but, you know, really opening that space for men because I did receive a lot of feedback of men asking for this help, and, you know, I just feel like healing support is something that I can offer. Other things, you know, I don't feel as comfortable offering, like, you know, teaching the light body energetics and things like that uh, that are particularly sexual organ connected. Um, but, you know, for as far as the healing component, I'm going to be opening that space uh, up then. 
Okay, Whew. so just taking a moment and doing a little, a little energy clearing here. Yeah. So, um, <laughs> swerving back in here. Uh, what do we? Is there any final words I want to say about the patriarchy? So, oh gosh, it's just so multifaceted, right? I feel like this is the most interesting healing work and also the deepest healing work we can do because the um, attack on our organic creation system is just immense. And even now in my system, like there's a process we call hieroscamos, which is the process of recognizing you have an inner feminine and an inner masculine and how your inner feminine and masculine can have a relationship. And this is something we teach in the intermediate section of our school. And when I first communicated around this to my clients and students inside last year's galactic shamanism container, many people had just extraordinary experiences because they didn't realize that these two parts inside of them can have a conversation. Now, in some client sessions, we found that, you know, women's inner masculines were either on the other side of a canyon, like banished, or they're just completely, you know, broken down because the inner feminine is kind of, you know, bullying them. And all of these different ways that the inner feminine and masculine were pitted against each other and their disc their connections were severed and this is actually the root of a lot of our issues in our personal relationships is that if we have certain dynamics that are ingrained inside of ourselves, we learn a lot of these from our parents from our ancestors again from the patriarchy and from the sexual misery program but if we have these patterns inside of us meaning you know maybe we don't believe in ourself and we don't trust ourself and we don't put ourselves first and we don't honor ourselves. we'll find those patterns externally in our relationships and we'll go through these painful relationships trying to get somebody to love us but you know we'll just continually attract the same painful patterns until we're able to heal the rift inside of our being um and so healing the effects of patriarchy is a major theme in our healing container in our womb healing container um, more importantly you know i just want to let you know that we're coming from the perspective of healing the rift between inside of us and in and outside of us so this has nothing to do i know that you know right now in the world this crazy weird feminist thing like my little brother told me that in school he's in high school and he told me that the girls in his high school wear like we hate men shirts and like that's just kind of like the common thing like they'll say like hashtag feminism but then feminism is just hating on men which is like really stupid and horrible and definitely an extension of the sexual misery program right um and so that's the kind of thing that we have in the reality that's the kind of thing that we have in society that's normalizing these energies and is outright war it is war okay being continuously just bombarded with this kind of bullshit is literally, you know, a war on consciousness. And so the way that we fight this war is by reclaiming our own consciousness and by being so freaking aware of all the sneaky ways that it can get into our brain. And, you know, so then the reason why I'm saying that, you know, these containers are for healing is because when the women, when the womb begins to heal from these things, so a lot of women are afraid of men or just feel like men are horrible or feel like men have hurt us or feel like men have victimized us. We need to get deeper through the healing to come to the place where we can feel compassion for all of the distortions and the abuse that has occurred to the men. And the reason why, you know, it, it seems to be up to us is that it, it seems to be a kind of a feminine oriented uh thing to focus on the healing to be sensitive to tune into these more subtle frequencies of reality it's kind of our job right it's kind of um the natural ability of the feminine to tap into more of the intuitive more of the psychic more of the etheric aspects of reality and the other thing is that you know the womb there are capabilities of the womb that are um prophetic and um 
of source in nature. And this is the original divine mother goddess energy that is really coming through. And so the womb as a light technology, the womb as a source of the hologram, if we're able to correct these viruses inside of our womb, we can literally birth the antidote. We can make it a lot easier for the men to heal because in a, um, we think about a a beehive, there's a, a certain geometry or a certain pattern or a certain a collective neural net that the bees are connected to that informs the bees of the reality. So in human society, that exists as well, except right now in human society, that signal has just been utterly and completely hijacked, okay? It's being rewritten and reimposed by these mind control technologies and these mind control programs. But to the point where humans have completely lost track and completely forgotten what the original signal or the original structure of life on earth even is and so this is going to be a really the deepest most potent work that we can do in this container is by going so deep that we begin to remember and piece back together the original frequencies of that collective coherence of that organic harmony of how life used to be of what it feels like when all of life was in harmony with each other if we can see that original vibration of joy ease love abundance into the womb star then we can begin to radiate that signal and that literally holds space for the entire society to come back into harmony we become these you know i keep seeing a beehive but um, a, a beehive where the coherence and the harmony comes back into the original resonance. And so this is what we're going to be doing um, in the womb healing container on top of all of the good stuff that we're going to be learning and healing. And on the sixth week uh, on 2 2022 we're going to be uh, dismantling the um, this AI technology in 10D. This particularly is connected to um, kind of uh, angelic level energy siphoning devices for all of you that have higher selves as goddesses and as archetypal energies in star systems. You know, I've had sessions with people that are literally the higher self of a star system, which is amazing. It's so cool. You know, and they, and they will tell me like, oh, I've always felt like I was a goddess, but, you know, I thought I was just full of myself. Well, no, there's literally archetypal energies that are incarnate as human bodies on this planet right now because you know these these goddesses these beings these oversouls of galaxies and planets um, and star systems we have the energy um, and the capability to um, bring about this shift in the universe and so this is the stuff that we're going to be be doing in the womb healing container. Um, for those of you that are kind of on the fence, I mean, if you feel called to do this work with us, um, I would be so honored. We go, you know, we don't go halfway here at the Air Star Academy. <laughs> if we're going somewhere, we're going all the way. So, yeah. Um, whew, so I feel like that was um, a lot. I'm probably going to just take a couple of breaths and check out how you guys are doing in the in the chat box here. Um, yeah, for those of you that have um, that asks if you can do both the womb healing class and the academy, my suggestion is because the academy is an ongoing thing and it's just going to be on the internet forever, that you should probably just take the womb healing class because that is time sensitive and is happening now. And it's Kara um, is holding space on the other side of the veil. So this is why the frequencies can come in so clearly because she's not at all confused. She doesn't need any, um, she doesn't need any lucidity training because she's still totally not affected by the veil at all. And so we have this amazing opportunity to receive transmissions from a master starseed that's still on the other side. And that you know, I get to receive the transmissions from her on a daily basis. So I, I feel like I'm the luckiest person in the whole world. And this is an opportunity for everyone to, you know, receive that support. So if you're thinking about joining both, definitely just join the womb health 
and the womb healing container first. And then, you know, you can take a break, right? And then you can join Earth Star Academy at any point. If you're going to, if you're one that are wanting to wait for the Earth Star Academy to open up, all of the teachings are going to be um, in the Academy um, as well. So, and uh, yeah, and then I'm going to send out information probably in the beginning of February for that two-day ceremony experience. Uh, going to be called Hero Scam- Gamos. Um, it's going to be for men and women, and we're going to be addressing circumcision trauma and um, uh, sexual organ trauma as well. And I just feel like, oh, yeah, I, I have not on a soul level and on a human level been ready for that work, but I'm feeling how needed it is in the community. So I'm just going to work through that inside of myself because I'm feeling the codes for that come through. And, and they're just too beautiful for me to shrink away from. Um, somebody said loosh. So yeah, I guess we haven't um, fully addressed the loosh. One second here. Biggest regret I have is having my son's circumcision. So I just want you to totally forgive yourself and give yourself a big hug because you love your children and you would not have done that if you knew, right? It's like we we're, we only are given what we, um, what we have going through this life. And so, so many of us unwittingly, you know, committed all of these or co-created very many difficult things, like even eating factory farmed meat. You know, we participated in some sort of pain, painful ritual, and we had no idea. And it's just the way that this fallen system was designed. So everybody forgive yourself. You were just doing your best all the time. And, you know, the fact that you're awake now, you have so much power to engage in that healing. And yeah. Um, definitely the more forgiveness we can bring through on all levels for ourselves, especially the better. Okay, so let's see here. I want to talk, I'll just, we'll go into the loose just a little bit. Um, because, you know, it could be his own talk all on its own, but essentially loose is, okay, there are beings in the interdimensional spaces. We call them entities. We call them parasites that are etheric in nature. So they're energy based. They're not physical. We don't see them. Sometimes they can materialize into physical things like candida and different yeast infections and different bacterial infections and other different kinds of physical ailments. They can materialize from etheric entities, but not always. Now, there is a system of etheric beings that basically siphon human energy. And in order for them to siphon energy, these particular parasites only can eat um, negative emotions. And so energies like love and joy and these exuberant divine frequencies, the qualities of emotions is not a good food source for them. And so they prefer and need food sources that are you know, basically the denser and the more mis- miserable, the better. Again, why these programs are called sexual misery program, right? Why satanic rituals exist? Why, you know, are they trying to conjure up as horrible of emotions as they can in the form of anxiety and fear and desperation and anxiety, right? And so I want you to pay attention to, again, things that we have normalized, okay? <laughs> The most extraordinary um, realization I've had about the loosh is, you know, in meditation one day, I realized that there was this tension in my body that ran down from my shoulder all the way down my back. Now, this is something that's normal. I, in my brain, I think, oh, you know, it's just my, that's just how I am. That's just my tension. You know, I'm just holding tension like that. That's just normal to me. But Another thing that is common to me in my life is that sometimes I'll just feel insecure. And this is something that I thought that, you know, it just didn't occur to me was not normal. Because when you're living your life and certain things come up, you don't really like stand back and say, well, that's that's not normal. I shouldn't feel like that. Right. When we're in the middle of feeling bad about ourselves and feeling 
like we're not perfect and we're judging ourselves. For example, actually in high school, I experienced the extreme form of this in the form of an eating disorder. And in my quantum healing on myself, I've gone back in time and seen these these entities coming in out of these portals. And part of it was um, that my subdivision was built on top of a, a massacre ground. And so there were just lots of crazy interdimensional stuff going on there. And so, you know, um, all of the false matrix programming on young people that they have to look a certain way, that they have to be skinny, that if they're not skinny, then they're not going to be lovable and they can't love themselves, right? Again, that splitting of our, between ourself and ourself. And so essentially, um, I realized that there was a, this very subtle part of me that was always subconsciously um insecure and i'm sure that this is actually a common thing like maybe yours is anxious or maybe is a different energy like you know slightly agitated or you just like feel like there's something not right like there's always something not right right you just anything that's keeping you from being in this totally relaxed and joyful state i mean most people are not living like that right i mean most people are Hang on, I just got to block these bots here. <laughs> um, yeah, most people are um, not living in a state of absolute joy. And again, we've normalized that, right? We think, oh, you need to go into a mountain and meditate in a cave and talk to some Indian guru master to find, you know, your secret. And it's like, no, actually, we, we're supposed, we're, have you ever seen a baby? They're just like, right? They're like, oh my God, life, life is so cool. Let me look at all this stuff. And, you know, what took us away from that is all of the programming and all the trauma that we experience. And then we grow up and they tell us, well, you know, in order to be an enlightened being, you have to do all this special stuff. It's like, no, you literally just have to heal yourself because we were designed to live these lives of joy and brilliance and exuberance and creativity and enjoyment. They're like, you know, and, and just as a side note here, our root chakra dictates our reality, right? And so we were literally designed with a pleasure center in our root chakra. You think the sexual organs are in the sacral chakra, but when you feel into the pleasure center, like the clitoris and the penis, these parts of the organs are actually closer to the root chakra. And so essentially what God is telling us and what we're telling ourselves and what nature is telling us is that life is meant to be full of pleasure. Life is meant to be full of joy and excitement and ease, right? And pleasure. Life is supposed to be pleasurable. Now, if you go out and ask any human being, you're like, do you think life is pleasurable? They'll probably look at you and they're like, uh, no, life is hard life is scary. <laughs> life is, you know, you, you have to do all the stuff you don't like, right? And so all of this is actually, again, a part of the sexual misery program. Oh my goodness, right? Where we, we, we've we lost touch with the, the organic state of our being. And so when we realize that normal, what is supposed to be normal is actually waking up in the morning and feeling ease, feeling excitement, feeling peace and harmony and ready for the day, feeling, you know, oh, my body's feeling good today. Let me do a stretch. I love this body. Being on earth is so great and I'm enjoying my life so much. If that's actually normal and we place that side by side with our current state of energetic consciousness and state, we'll start to realize where we're being energetically loosed and where the misery, the life force misery, and where these little mind control programs exist, right? So, whew. okay, coming back to the louche, right? There's subtle ways that louche is generated, and then there's extreme ways. Extreme ways include um, these major false flag attacks where a lot of fear and anger is stirred up in the collective. It includes, you know, of course, ritual abuse, which is probably the most extreme way that Lucia is generated. But the most common way is really through the subtle, subtle way that is consistent in every human being all the time, right? Think about 
think about the times when you are just in total ease and in love with life. And then think about the other times where there's just like a subtle state of anxiety, okay? That is not normal. And that subtle state of anxiety is literally a holding pattern, something that is distorting your light body that's consistently siphoning that energy away from you. And you're experiencing it psychologically as depression, anxiety, sadness, whatever it is that is you know, not, not saying that, you know, sadness itself is abnormal, but um, if you're just consistently anxious, you know, sadness comes when an experience inspires that natural emotion. But if you're depressed, if your natural baseline state is depressed, depression, fear, anxiety, then that's the subtle frequency energy that's consistently being siphoned away. And um, somebody is asking how we can heal from these things. So, um, the easiest way that I have, um, provided is by working with the sound chambers. And so if you go on my YouTube channel, you'll find a collection. I just started adding to this. It's a growing collection. So in the coming year, I'll be uploading a lot more of these, but essentially just by listening to these 15 to 20 minutes a day while meditating and working your way up to hour long sessions, um, you can begin to learn to scan your body for these distortions and heal them. You can also um, tune in. Actually, in the coming month, I'm going to have a gift for you guys. I'm going to be uploading four guided meditations of basic self-healing techniques that anyone can use to begin to heal these distortions. Um, and so I'm just getting ready to... Um, upload these and figure out what's the best way to upload them. Um, Cam, you can search Earth Star Academy on YouTube. Um, and then actually Cassandra posted the um, link there. And thanks. Callie is telling me that the bots are finding my video because the word sexual is in it. It's probably true. Alex is saying, is the Ascension Glossary the best source to start learning from or is there a better one? So Ascension Glossary is an amazing resource. The, the Earth Star Academy is basically the next phase of the same um, guardian group that are doing this work on Earth. So I consider myself, I consider myself the next generation of this work that is just beginning. So I definitely recommend keeping your eyes out on the Earth Star Academy because um, Issa is going to be breaking down that dense information that Lisa has channeled and written into the Ascension Glossary. Issa is going to be breaking it down into bite-sized chunks and also action items and support system that you can use and integrate on a daily basis to begin to digest this information and process it. Um, and so... Yeah, um, so we can find the link to the womb healing class in the uh, description box. If you are a woman and you are wanting to do this work and you happen to, you know, be able to participate financially, I just can't, you know, encourage you enough to um, invest in yourself in this way because, you know, the feedback that I get from people that have taken this class is extraordinary. I've had, you know, tumors disappear and I've had curses, like generational curses that just like no longer influence them and like families are back together and all of these crazy things happen and it's all scientific. It's not magic. And so Lana says, can you upload the meditations to Spotify? Yes, I will be uploading them to Spotify. I have three sound chambers that are on Spotify. You can search Earth Star Academy to access them. I have at, uploaded the fourth and the newest sound chamber onto Spotify, but I had some issues with the guided meditation. They, they rejected my upload, so I'm going to have to upload it again. But I will be uploading those meditations on Spotify, hopefully. So, yes. Thank you to all the new people that are tuning in. I would love for you to drop me a comment in the comment section below on, you know, what your feedback is. I know that every time I go through kind of a growth spurt, I just want to make sure that the information that I'm sharing is resonant and coherent with the audience. And so I would love for you to um, just give me that feedback and let me know if what I'm putting down is, is good for, and resonant for your brain. Um, 
Tasha says, any in-person ceremony or retreats or events happening this year? Um, so I'm, I'm getting ready to give birth. <laughs> so I'm probably going to be like in my house with my newborn baby and just chilling. I don't imagine I'll be doing any in-person events this year, especially with all the crap that's happening. Um, but definitely in the coming years, uh, I, I want to uh, do more live experiences. Um, there's a template for live experiences coming through. I'm still getting the training for them, but essentially they're going to be a living sound chamber. I've seen these live events where it's going to be like kind of a loungy dance party situation where people can lie down or move. And when we bring through the sound vibrations, it's literally going to come down like this light ship is going to come in and we're going to feel our galactics working on us, which I think you guys already experience when you're listening to the sound chambers and when you're in the healings, but it's just going to be so cool um, in a space together. So those are definitely coming in the coming years. Uh, um, I am due in April. And, uh, <laughs> Dawn says, can I ask a question about my male cat? I don't want to nut nutter him. He's seven months old. What is your take on that? So it's interesting because obviously we're talking about all the stuff and it's, uh, it's hard to talk about it with pets because pets in itself, it's a questionable situation. Like I have dogs and I've had cats and I know that there's a lot of animals that need our care because they were bred to be pets. And I, I have yet to fully figure out if it's a completely natural thing. Like if we lived in complete connection with nature, would we still have pets or would we just have wild animals that are friends that come to visit us sometimes. I don't know. So in the case of, um, of cats, I know that some people have a really hard time. Like cats have a hard time if it's going to be an indoor cat. Like if it's going to be an indoor cat and it can't go outside, um, that's pretty weird of a life to have <laughs> as an animal or as anything. And so then if you, it's almost compassionate to, um, to, to, not them as you say <laughs> um because you know the you you'll take away some of that natural instinct to you know don't get, feel crazy being inside all the time right so yeah i don't know you're gonna have to talk to the cat i have an animal communicator if you want to talk to her but i think you can just talk to your cat and and figure out if yeah melissa says that unneutered cats can be hell and I've heard that as well so you're just gonna have to figure that out and so anyway it's all of these things nothing's black and white you know we need to just kind of be uh fluent or fluid with these things Shane says, my shamanic friend got a download that there are a small number of entities controlling the elites who in turn are directing affairs on earth, draining our luge. That's pretty much it, my friend. And so we need to begin to unplug ourselves and we can then unplug humanity. This, this is a thing. It's like so many people in the disclosure community are just talking about the cabal all the time. And it's like, yeah, it's cool. Like we've just been saying the same shit for like 10 years now. And what have we done really? Like, if nobody, if we're not unplugging ourselves from the machine, then even if we understand the machine completely, we're not going to be able to do anything because we, we don't have access to our life force energy. And so the only way out of this is through internalizing these things. And that's the hard part. And that's the stuff that I'm here for. This is the stuff that I'm here to guide you guys through. If you need that support, I am here for you. That's why I'm here. That's why the Earth Star Academy is here. And so we're just really excited to get get to get to work <laughs> so he's, he said also that the information required for bringing them down is in the akashic records and it must be done in the higher dimensions so this is partially true i mean the information required in bringing them down is being transmitted um and i think that it's being done simultaneously in the higher dimensions as well as this one 
That is why when I'm communicating with you guys, I tell you that you have to get to know your higher selves and you get you have to reclaim your energy because that's how we do the higher dimensional work in our physical body, right? That's why we're here. So yes, it has to be done in a higher dimension, but I think that that's a little bit deceptive because that makes people think, well, oh, you know, they've got it up there. They're going to do the work and we just sit around and it's like, no, we have to do the higher dimensional work from here in our bodies. And this is why we do the light body clearing. We begin to work on a subtle energy training and we access our higher dimensional selves and we begin to disassemble the, uh, the, the, the technology and the prison system with our consciousness, right, which is multidimensional, meaning existing here and in the higher dimensions. And so this is exactly the work that we do here at the Earth Star Academy. And <laughs> all right, let's see here. Okay. So welcome to the channel, Shane. Uh, we're so happy that you're here and welcome to all the people that are new to this channel. I'm so grateful that this work is reaching more and more people. And for those of you that are in my OG community, I love you so much. Thank you for just being with me and, um, you know, believing in me and also co-creating on this mission uh, so powerfully for the past couple of years. We are getting ready to expand. The Galactics keep telling me because, you know, <laughs> We got to get everybody on the same page here, right? This is really the stuff that every star seed should know about. And this is what the Earth Star Academy is here for is to fill these blanks in. Because right now, the star seeds are like at war in the battlefield, blindfolded with no weapons. <laughs> and we're like, I think we're here to create heaven on earth. I have no idea what I'm doing. And so let's go. You know, the, the time is here. The, the support is coming in. And we're getting ready to just rock this uh evolutionary phase on earth here and we're so excited to be here together so on that note um i'm excited to see you guys next week those of you that are uh drawn come into the womb healing container it is just going to be so magical if you guys think that starseed mission support raises your vibration imagine being inside of a medicine container for nine weeks with me kara and my ancestors and the galactics it is a great time um and for those of you that are just chilling and experiencing and uh, co-creating in the field i love you i bless you and i hope to see you guys next week on starseed mission support bye for now